Hey everyone, Doc T down here in uh, South Florida along with Melissa is over there. Hello. <laughs> we spent all day here in, in uh, Wellington and there's a couple things. Uh, one, I did a horse that we've been working with for a while who is just so paranoid of everything. And it turns out it needs a good leader around it. And as long as there's no leaders around, it'll take over and it's not a good leader. So teaching leadership is important uh, also for the horse. Because once the horse figured out who I was, became the most cooperative uh, patient and that's really really uh, the key to becoming a good horseman is to creating good leadership. But the other thing was at lunchtime, this is really cool, mind our own business and this guy comes up to me and says, hey, are you Dr. Tucker? And I'm like, yeah. And he says, I'm Vincent. I'm from Spain. I've got my daughter here. Uh, he's another tooth floater. And that's what's really cool because um, he's been doing this for 22 years and is an American now working and he wanted to um, ask me some questions and we started talking and what I found out was he started to recite to me all the things that he'd been taught things like um, incisor reductions balancing the mouth uh, and some other things he wanted to sh he showed me some pictures of a um, uh, what do you call it um, wave mouth uh, hook and all this stuff and he and he says look at it and he one time he said I worked so hard on a horse it took me three hours to get this horse done three hours because it wasn't cooperative and I'm like man if you're working three hours you're working like two and a half hours too long in this horse it should have been given some drugs or pain or whatever I'm not sure but what I found interesting was he was very good at reciting what he'd been told but he wasn't into thinking after 22 years, and I think that's what separates a lot of us. Like Melissa and I, we sit here and we think, we ask questions, why? Why this happens? Why does that happen? And we and we try to dig deeper, like incisors. Why, instead of going straight across, it does a curve, a smile, or a frown, or a slant, or even a V-shape, what causes that? And what we're finding out is, the tongue is moving in and out, in and out, in and out, and that's what creates that wave. The way, it's the way the tongue moves forward through those incisors. So I asked him uh, when he said that two days after he floats the teeth, they seem balanced at the temperament, dip of the joint isn't sore and on and on. I said, have you ever just tried removing the sharp edges and letting the horse chew for a couple of days and coming back and checking? Because you're probably going to find the same result. In other words, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on, but the bottom line for every float that we do, it's the removal of sharp points that cause pain. And that's the bottom line. That's what uh, Melissa and I are doing. There's Melissa. Uh, hey guys. <laughs> and uh, we're going to sign off now. We're about to pop onto the uh, the throughway and head home. It's 5.30 here down in South Florida. And uh, it's pretty cold. It's 72 degrees. I know that seems warm for everybody else. But for Except us, for me. I hate the cold. I'm a wimp. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I know Christmas is coming up. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more of these things and we're going to take a few days off. Uh, but we're going to keep touching on points that we see every day on the horses. We got full days tomorrow and Friday. Um, and then uh, we're going to take Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. And then it's back to work on Tuesday. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.